Chapter 1. At the Foot of the Mountains Mary Jones pulled her shawl tightly around her shoulders and darted across the lane. There was no one to see her as she ran. The night shadows had fallen around the little Welsh village of Llanfangel. It was late autumn in 1792, and a cold wind moaned and sighed among the trees, stripping them of their leaves, now no longer bright green, whirling them around and laying them in shivering heaps along the narrow valley. The grey stone cottages of Llanfangel Apenent seemed to be hiding below the mountain of Kedar Idris, with its dark crags and rocky precipices. Stretching away in the distance lay the faint outline of Cardigan Bay, with white breakers rolling in to dash into foam. The pale moon lit up peaked masses of cloud that looked like another ghostly Kedar Idris in the sky. Mary Jones looked back over her shoulder. A warm light shone through the windows of one of the cottages in the village. That cottage was her home. The light came from the blaze of a fire of driftwood in the stone hearth, and also from a rushlight, thrown at somewhat uncertain brightness upon a loom where a weaver sat at work. A bench, two or three stools, a cupboard, and a kitchen table. These, with the loom, were the only pieces of furniture. Standing in the centre of the room, a woman was dressed in a cloak and a tall black hat. I'm sorry you cannot go, Jacob, she was saying in Welsh. You'll be missed at the chapel meeting. Yes, but I'm thankful that I needn't sit idle, but can still attend to my trade, replied Jacob Jones. There is many a deal worse off than I am with a cold in my chest. But what are you waiting for, Molly? You'll be late. It must be gone six o'clock. I'm waiting for that child. She's gone for the lantern, said Mary Jones, who her husband generally called Molly, to distinguish her from their daughter, who was also Mary. Jacob smiled. The lantern? Yes, he said. You'll need it this dark night. It was a good thought of yours, Molly, to let our Mary go with you. She does seem so eager. Yes, she knows already pretty nearly all that you and I can teach her of the Bible as we learnt it, Jacob. I can remember when she was smaller she would sit on your knee on a Sunday and hear about Abraham, Joseph and David and Daniel. There never was a girl like our Mary for Bible stories, or any stories, bless her. But here she is. You've been a long time getting that lantern, child. We must hurry or we shall be late. Mary raised a pair of bright, dark eyes to her mother's face. Yes, mother, she replied. I was long because I ran to borrow neighbour William's lantern. The latch of ours won't hold, and there is such a wind tonight that I knew we should have the light blown out. There is a moon, said Mrs. Jones, and I could have done without a lantern. Yes, but then I should have had to stay at home, answered Mary, for she knew that her father would not let her go without a light. Then she added, And I do so love to go. You needn't tell me that, child, laughed Molly. Then come along, Mary. Goodbye, Jacob. Goodbye, father. I wish you could come too, cried Mary, running back to give Jacob a last hug. Go your way, child, and mind you remember all you can. Then you can tell me all you've learnt when you come home. The cottage was called Tanadol. Suddenly the door opened and Mary and her mother sallied out into the cold, windy night. The moon had disappeared now behind the thick, dark cloud, and Mary's borrowed lantern was very useful. Carefully she held it, so that the light fell upon the way they had to go, a way which would have been difficult, if not dangerous, without its friendly aid. Chlysarn ad er am tred, a chlywech am chlywibr, said Mrs. Jones, remembering words from the Bible. Your word is a lamp to guide me, and a light for my path. Psalm 119 verse 105 Yes, mother, I was just thinking of that, replied Mary. I wish I knew more verses like that one. How glad I should be if your father and I could teach you more. But it's years since we learned, and we've got no Bible, and our memories are not as good as they used to be, sighed Mrs. Jones. A walk of some length along a rough road brought them at last to the little meeting house where the members belonging to the Methodist chapel were gathered. They were rather late, and the midweek service had begun, but Farmer Evans made room for them on his bench. 
Mary was the only child there. But she was so willing to listen and to learn that no one looking at her could have felt that she was out of place. Indeed, the members who met there had come to look upon her as one of their number and made her very welcome. When the meeting was over, Mary relit her lantern and was ready to accompany her mother home. But Farmer Evans put his great broad hand on her shoulder, saying, Well, my little maid, you're rather young for these meetings, though the Lord has need of lambs as well as sheep, and he is well pleased when the lambs learn to hear his voice early, even in their tender years. Then with a gentle smile the old man released the girl and turned away. He knew that in Mary's face there was a promise of power for good. Why haven't we a Bible of our own, mother? asked Mary as she trotted homeward, lantern in hand. Because Bibles are scarce, child, and we're too poor to pay the price for one. A weaver's is an honest trade, Mary, but we don't get rich by it, and we think ourselves happy if we can keep the wolf from the door and have clothes to cover us. Still, precious as the word of God would be in our hands, it is more important that its teachings and its truths find a place in our hearts. I tell you, my girl, they who come to know the love of God have discovered the greatest truth that even the Bible can teach them. And those who are trusting Jesus for their pardon and peace and for eternal life can wait patiently to find out more of his word and will. I suppose you can wait, mother, because you've waited so long that you're used to it, replied Mary. But it's harder for me. Every time I hear something read out of the Bible, I long to hear more. But if I could read, it would be harder still not to have one of our own. Mrs. Jones was about to answer when she stumbled over a large stone and fell, though fortunately without hurting herself. Mary's thoughts were so full of what she had been saying that she had become careless in holding the lantern high. Her mother, not seeing the stone, had caught her foot against it. Ah, child! It's the present duties that we must look after most, said Molly as she got slowly up. And even a fall may teach us a lesson, Mary. The very word of God itself, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, can't save us from many a tumble if we don't use it the right way. If we let the light shine on our daily life, the Lord will help us in all that we do. Remember this, Mary. And Mary did remember this and her life proved that she had taken the lesson to heart. A simple lesson, taught by her mother who loved the Lord, and a lesson which she treasured up in her very heart of hearts. The Word of God, the Bible, the most important book in the world, and a light for the way.